Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about yields, how to use them, when to use them, and when not to use them. So I have a demo set up here, and we're going to start off by calling from function 1. So function 1 runs, and the first line is we're setting a variable equal to a function. Now the important thing to note about GDScript is that it's going to run right to left. So what's going to happen is it's going to run this function first and then assign whatever this is return to function 2. So we're going to run function 2, we're going to print 2, and then we're going to yield. Now if we go into the yield doc, we're going to see that it stops the function execution and returns the current suspended state to the calling function. And it returns this GD script function state, which is just a state of a function called after yielding. So now we're returning this GD script function state, which is also pretty much a yield state. So F2 now equals this yield state. We're going to print one here, and then we're going to resume that yield state that F2 represents. And it's going to go back into function two. It's going to yield, resume, and then print two. So again, just a little overview. Go here, run right to left first. So we're going to run this. Then we're going to print two. We're going to yield, and it's going to return from the calling function, which is function one. So it's going to return to function two. It's going to print one. We're going to resume F2, which is, you know, has the yield state of function two. And it's going to resume here and it's going to print two. So we expect to see 212 down here. And we do. Okay, so moving on to our second example, which is function three, which is very similar here. Again, we have this line of code. We're going to run a function four. Inside of function four, we print four. But this time we're setting a variable equal to yield. Now, again, remember that yield returns the yield state. And we run right to left, right? So we're going to yield first. And then it's going to go back to function three, set F4 equal to that yield state. And then we're going to resume it with a parameter. And if we look into the resume function of GDScript function state, it resumes execution of the yielded function call. If handed an argument, return the argument from the GDScript.yield call in the yielded function call. You can pass, you know, for example, an array. We're going to pass just the number three because we only need one input or one parameter. Sorry. So when we resume this, it's going to go back here and we're going to resume from this line. And we're going to look over here and we're going to return F4. Now, when we resume it here, we're passing in that parameter to whatever this is equaling. So F4 is now going to equal three. So when we print F4, it's going to print three. So if we run this here, we expect four and three, right? Okay, so that's pretty much the premise of yield. What I'm going to be showing you here is a different scenario of yield. And it's going to be dealing with the completed signal of yield. If we go back into this class, we're going to see that it has its own completed signal and it's going to return a result or it has a result, right? So it goes into here it yields a function six completed signal. What this means is that it's going to run function six first, and then it's going to wait until function six is completed. Now, the only way that it gets this completed signal from function six is if function six itself has a completed signal to emit, right? And that's from a yield. Inside of function six, we have our own yield. But again, we're actually calling function seven and waiting until that is completed. So you run function seven. So all in all, we haven't run any print statements at all. We've just yielded to function six, yield to function seven, and now we're in function seven. So we're going to loop I and five, which is just, we're going to loop five times and we're going to print seven, five times. And if you guys know anything about loops, it's that it prints everything simul uh, simultaneously, right? It's not going to wait at all. To offset that or to counter that, we're going to actually have this yield statement here. Now, this yield statement is very different. What we're doing here is we're creating a timer from the tree, right? So it's pretty much making the timer, adding it as a child, and then starting it. So we're creating a timer of 0.2 seconds, and we're yielding the timeout signal. 
Now, what this means, and we'll go into the actual timer node to see what this actually means. The timeout signal is emitted when the timer reaches zero. When we yield the timeout signal, we're essentially waiting until the timeout signal is emitted. So we're basically yielding until the timer reaches zero. This can be used with a lot of different nodes. For example, tween here has a tween completed and it's emitted when tween ends. Animation player has an animation finish and it's animated, uh, it is emitted when an animation is finished playing. So we're waiting until something finishes, right? And in this case, it's a timer and it's based off the timeout signal. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna print seven, we're gonna wait 0.2 seconds, then iterate again through the for loop. So we're gonna increase I by one, and then it's gonna print seven again, wait, print seven, wait. So when we run it, you're actually gonna see uh, the print running line by line instead of all at once. Okay, so now we're back to function seven and we're done. Let's say we just reached the end of the for loop and we just yielded our last yield statement. This means we're gonna go back to function six because we just emitted the completed signal, right? There's nothing else to yield. So we go into here and we print six and function six is now done. And now function five, which yielded function six completed is now gonna be able to run, right? So it's gonna print five. And then this is a little different this has nothing to do with the completed example, but this is kind of expressing how the timer timeout signal works. We're gonna start a timer of one second. We're gonna record the starting time. We're gonna yield the timeout signal as you know shown over here. And then we're gonna print the ending time. So when the timer finishes minus the starting time. And so if we run it here, notice here, play, uh, pay close attention. So notice how the sevens ran one by one, and then it ran to six, and then it ran to five, and then it printed this timer, which is pretty much one second. Uh, this is mostly due to float precision error. Okay, so now we see the different use cases for yield. The biggest use case is probably waiting for a signal emitted from a node. Um, I would say this is probably the most common use case um, I don't know if ne it's necessarily because of lack of knowledge or just because of practical use, but this is probably the most common use case. But obviously, things like completing the function, right? This is very useful. Um, and one thing I want to note again is that you have to yield, right? If you do this, first argument of yield does not uh, is not of type object, right? So what it's saying is that this isn't returning anything. Right? Again, when we yield, we're returning this GDScript function state. That's how we know we get this completed signal, which is inside of GDScript function state. So that's why we have to yield also in the function that we're yielding, if that makes any sense, right? In this function that we're calling completed from or yielding completed from, we have to make sure that function six itself is yielding something. Okay, so those are two different use cases. And here we have, things called coroutines. And what coroutines are is pretty much we have a function for, right? And coroutine is we run this first routine. Um, this is probably a better example. We run this first routine here uh, of function two, and then we yield. So we pretty much like are cutting the function in half, We're going back here, and then we wait and resume. And that's what's considered a coroutine. Okay, now what do you not wanna do, right? What are the bad practices? The first bad practice is running yield inside of something like process and process runs constantly. Notice again that we were calling everything from ready. So it's running once. When we run from process, we're running constantly, constantly never stopping. And what this does is that we're yielding, but process doesn't care that we're yielding. It's gonna just keep yielding over and over and over and we're gonna be yielding these, these random timeout signals. The tree's gonna be creating random timers and it's just gonna be a mess, right? And this is not gonna work at all. It's not gonna work how you expect it to. So don't do this. Don't do this in process, physics process, um, while loops, etc. And then the second error that uh, comes out a lot is when we change scenes. 
So let's say we call this function changing scenes, which just changes the scene to a random scene. Let's say we're yielding this timer, right? And it's 0.2 seconds long. But then during like 0.1 seconds, so before the timer emits that timeout signal, we change the scene. Now the yield is still going to run. It's going to finish. But then the system has no idea what to do now because we yielded and we were expecting to wait in this node, but that node no longer exists when we change the scenes. So this is the same thing as freeing a node. If we free a node, it's also bad if we yield and we free a node while it's yielding. Now, this isn't going to be a fatal error. Most likely your project will actually run perfectly fine. But what's going to happen is that later down the line, you're going to start noticing some errors or some performance issues. Um, and things are just not going to be kept well. So you just want to make sure that you're not doing this. And that's pretty much it. Yield is a very useful thing. Make sure you do not over abuse it. I see people doing this all the time, especially in here. And that is just so bad. So please don't overuse it. Make sure you understand why you're using it. If you can use a timer node, if you can use a tween node, an animation player node, use it. You don't always have to use yields, right? Sometimes maybe you want to connect this to a specific function. So just make sure you understand why you're using it and how you're using it. And that's pretty much it from me. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you.